today we'll be installing the Overland Plus 2.5 inch lift kit on a Jeep Wrangler JL. This is a 100% bolt-on suspension, all the way down to the front track bar narrow forging to fit into the JL and the JT front track bar pockets. There's a lifetime warranty on all the arms and track bars. The arms, track bars, and sway bar links are fully adjustable. Track bars featuring our long shank adjuster for more adjustability using our dual durometer, maintenance-free self-centering joints. The front track bar forging has a longer neck, so the jam nut isn't hidden in the brackets, allowing easier access to tighten that jam nut. So let's get started. This installation can be done either on a lift or on jacks with jack stands. On this install, we're gonna start at the rear of the vehicle. Remove the tires. For easier rear upper bolt access on the shock, remove this section of the inner fender well Place jack stands or axle stands underneath the vehicle's axle. Remove both the shocks. Remove the stock sway bar linkage. Remove the rear track bar. Drop the emergency cable bracket above the axle. Make sure there's plenty of slack in these cables. Loosen all eight control arm bolts, but do not remove it this time. Lift up the vehicle or drop down the axle. Remove the stock springs. Keep a hold of the rubber boots, we will be reusing those. Insert the new Clayton springs using the boots. Install your new shocks. Refer to the Clayton website to see the recommended lengths for the control arms. We're going to install one full side at a time. Remove both control arms from one side. Keep all of the stock hardware, we will be reusing it. Install the control arms with the adjustment side on the vehicle side, not the axle. Once complete, repeat on the other side of the vehicle. Reattach the emergency brake cable bracket. Refer to the Clayton website for recommended lengths of your sway bar linkage. 
When the tires are on the vehicle and it is sitting on the ground, you want the sway bars to be sitting just north of horizontal. Attach your sway bar linkage and tighten the jam nuts. Check the Clayton website to see the proper distance from eyelet to eyelet for your new adjustable track bar. Attach your track bar with the hump in the bar over top of your rear differential. You may need a ratchet strap to align the hole on the vehicle side. Install the rear bump stops. Reattach the inner fender well sections we removed earlier. The rear installation is complete. Let's move forward. First thing we'll do is move our jack stands or our axle stands to the front. Drop the front crossbar member. Cutting just a little bit of inner fender liner out will help access the front shocks. Remove both front shocks. Disconnect all of the brake line brackets and all of the Christmas trees holding the wiring harnesses on. Remove the front sway bar linkage. Remove the front track bar. There's a bracket on each control arm. Remove the front diff breather hose. There's also a heat shield covering both upper control arms on the vehicle side. Remove that and save the hardware as well. Loosen all of the bolts holding the front control arms on, but do not remove at this time. Raise up the vehicle or lower the axle. Remove the stock spring, saving the springs boot. Insert the new springs. Make sure you have the bump stop inside of the new spring before attaching. Attach the new bump stock to the bottom. Install your new shocks. Again, refer to the Clayton website for the recommended starting lengths for your control arms. Remove all four stock control arms. Install all of your new control arms. 
The bend and the control arms point in towards the center of the vehicle on both sides. Reattach all the brake line brackets and Christmas tree plugs for the wiring. Quick tip, you can bend this small bracket upwards to give you more room for the brake lines. Consult the Clayton website to see how much of the threaded rod you'll need to cut for the front sway bar linkages. Attach the front sway bar linkages. Tighten the jam nuts on the sway bar linkage. Reattach the front crossbar member. Put all four tires back on. Lower the Jeep to the ground, let it settle under its own weight. Consult the Clayton website for recommended starting lengths for the track bars. Install the axle side of the track bar first. Another quick tip, have somebody sit in the driver's seat and turn the wheel left and right to make the holes line up on the track bar. Now that the vehicle is down on the ground and under its own weight, go back and tighten all bolts on this lift. Also remember to lock down all of your jam nuts on all control arms and track bars. Reattach the heat shields to the upper control arm attachment points. 